Hi everyone, it's Jam from Melbourne Food Forest. Today I want to talk to you about one of the toughest and easiest fruits that we grow, and that's strawberry guava. This is our strawberry guava plant. It's only about three years old and has been in this spot since winter last year. So first year in the ground and still a baby, but it's starting to produce loads of this gorgeous, big, plump, purple, pink fruit. You might hear the word guava and think, oh my gosh, I can't grow them here, especially not where we are in Melbourne, which is a, you know, a temperate to cool temperate climate. But you'd be surprised. Strawberry guava are the toughest guava that you can grow. They're not like this, the, the Hawaiian guavas or the other more fussy guavas. So there are many, many types of guavas. These are a really, really tough plant. I would say they're one of the toughest fruits that we grow in our garden and thrive even with absolute neglect. They're native to Mexico and um, South America and they've got beautiful glossy green foliage so I think they're such a pretty ornamental plant and you can see it's got a lovely shiny stems and bark as well can be grown both as a hedge so you can see how dense and bushy it is it would make a great hedge or it could be grown as a tree so if you prune it into a tr tree shape for us let me show you where we've got ours planted in one of the toughest conditions in our garden. So you can see here, it's under our grapefruit tree and our grapefruit tree is massive and established and it's an evergreen. So that means it's kind of blocking out the light to our guava for 90, 95% of the day. And it's growing under the canopy of this tree. So it means it's not getting much water either. And that's right, that's what I love most about it. It's so drought tolerant. We never water it and it's competing directly with our big established grapefruit tree and yet fends for itself and still produces loads of berries. And it is not fussy at all about soil types. So, you know, there's very few plants that are this easy going. You can plant it into hard clay, into salty soil or into beach sand, which is what virtually what we're gardening on here. And it is happy and it doesn't really need much care at all. I mean, look at all this fruit that's developing on its own over here. And you can see when it's um, unripe, it's green and rock hard. And when it starts to ripen, it turns pink and then goes to deep purple and has a bit of give when it's ready. It really is one of the toughest fruits that you can grow. It's great for food forest, and for filling those really tough, shady understory spots, which are both dry because they're sh shaded out by other trees and they're not getting water, and um, they're not getting much sun either. So the spot that we've got here, it's pretty much full shade. It doesn't really get much direct sun at all. And yet, you can see it still fruits really well. And part of the reason why I've planted it here is not many other things are going to do well here and also I know this is really prolific if anything I want to actually dwarf it a bit with um, by planting it under the canopy of another tree because otherwise it can get quite big itself so it can you can keep it pruned to a hedge or um, if you let it grow to a tree it can get between four to five meters tall so that's quite a tall tree by planting it near another tree and we've also got a, a lemon guava over there, which is brand, brand new. Uh, it was just a twig when we bought that and it's got some fruit on it now too. But I'm kind of planting things densely. And by planting things densely, you naturally dwarf them, which is actually what I want because it is so productive that even in these conditions, in its first year, we're gonna have lots of fruit and we'll do some picking and taste testings in a sec. But we actually don't need that much fruit. So once it establishes, we're going to have more fruit than what we can eat off this. And isn't that amazing that it is thriving in such tough conditions? Now, don't forget, this is a evergreen itself as well. So be careful where you plant it. You don't want to plant it, at least where we are in the southern hemisphere, on your north border. 
because it can get tall and you don't want it to shade out light in your entire garden. So plant it wisely, preferably on your southern borders because it is an evergreen tree. For us, it fruits twice a year. It's one of those cool plants where if you prune it at the right time, you will get a second flush of fruit. So we actually got a first flush of fruit in um, late spring. So flowers in early spring and fruits in late spring, early summer. And now we're mid autumn and we've got another batch of fruit ready to go. And you can see they're at different stages on the plant. So we've had flowerings throughout the whole warm month. You can see here that this is one that just starting to produce fruit and then they green and hard and ripe ones all on the same plant at the same time it does it can fruit quite continuously in warm weather and you can see the new shoots really quite cute they've got a red auburn kind of color on them and is that that might be tiny flower buds there i didn't even notice that it quite, it's possible that it could be putting on another flush of flowers. And the flowers are yellow and fuzzy. They almost look like an Australian bush flower, like a gum flower. And um, they're quite pretty. They are virtually pest and disease free. I've not seen anything that attacks this. It is so tough. Now to the most exciting bit, the tasting. Firstly, I will mention that it's not often used and people don't know about this, but the leaves are also edible. They're best used as a tea and you can steep it in water. They taste quite lemony, a bit like eucalyptus, kind of like how it looks. It almost looks like an Australian bush plant, even though it's native to South America. Um, so they make a nice tea for starters. But of course, what we're here for is this delicious fruit. And it's not called strawberry guava for no reason. It actually tastes like strawberry, amazingly. And the color also looks like strawberry. I'm going to do a quick picking of these. And then we're going to cut it open, look, see what it looks like on the inside. And we're going to do a taste test. The best time to pick them is when they turn a deep purple. They will naturally drop off the plant. So I found these under the plant and that's how I knew wow they're starting to ripen now this is you don't want to eat them until they're dark purple a lot of people will try them at this pink stage and go oh I don't like the taste it's too sour and um, it's it's not rich enough this is the stage you want to eat it the darker the color and the longer they ripen the more the sugars build up in the fruit and the sweeter they get so don't try them at this stage Try them at this dark, deep purple. You might wait till they drop off the bush if you're unsure, but they'll be soft and have a beautiful fragrant aroma. You can pick them at this stage, particularly if you've got lots of pests trying to go after your fruit. They will ripen off the vine and on the bench. You can pick them at the light pink stage. Just leave them somewhere inside to ripen, or you can leave them in the fridge. Because they're so rich and so high in sugar, they don't last that long off the tree. Now let's get picking. ripe ones for now we'll leave the green ones to ripen for a bit longer and this one's pink green so we won't pick that for now a beautiful bowl of strawberry guavas this is our second harvest of the season with the first being in spring and early summer and there's more on the tree that we're gonna have later but look at them 
is so big and they just look delicious. The colour is very appetising. If I smell it, mm, it's got a really fruity aroma when it's close to being ripe. So if I smell one of these underripe ones, it's just lightly strawberry scented, but it's a super soft purple one, which is one of the ones we're going to taste very soon. Mmm, beautiful, beautiful aroma coming from it and that tells you that it's ripe. Usually we don't get many of these because the kids come around and pick them all off so we're doing this before they notice this time. Now let's cut, cut one open and let me show you the inside. In our makeshift outdoor kitchen. Now where was that really ripe one? Is this it? Yep. Okay. They look like little love huts. Very juicy. You can see that juice already leaking out and they have that characteristic guava look inside. Uh, in our previous years, they didn't have any seeds, but I'm noticing that this year they do, whether because the fruit's bigger or maybe it's cross-pollinating with our lemon guava, which is right next to it, and we didn't have that in previous years. But the seeds I find are really teensy tiny. You can see them here. Most people just swallow them whole. They're almost not noticeable. Can I get one out? It's sitting in this pulp. Here's a little bit of a seed. That one's not fully formed. And yeah, not this one's not that seedy. Let's, let's try one though. It's got this beautiful pink coloring and the white creamy flesh in the center. Mmm. Mm, here's one pip. A bit yellow and hard actually, that pip is. Uh, you can swallow them whole or you can spit them out. There's not many in it. There's a few small ones dotted throughout. It's really creamy. It's quite sweet. At this stage I would say it's much more sweet than tart. It has a slightly strawberry fragrance and it's quite fruity. It's a little bit like if you've had fajoa or pineapple guava, it's somewhat similar to that in texture and has some of those same elements. But um, it's, yeah, how would I describe it? It's a bit more strawberry, like you really got to try and taste one yourself. They're really yum though. Mmm. Great in lunch boxes. A little bit pineapple-y as well. You can of course eat them just like this, which we will be doing straight after this, gorging them straight off the bush. You can put them in kids' lunch boxes, they're such a great size. And you can add them to fruit salads, smoothies and juices. Just adds that beautiful, sweet, tropical taste. They really are a flavour sensation. I would highly recommend them. You can't buy them in the shops anywhere and they're delicious. People also make them into jams. We are course haven't had enough to do that we've just been enjoying them fresh but one day when we do we might do that I would highly recommend this for your food forest it's tough it's easy to grow and most importantly it's delicious if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe and share with your friends that means the world to us and helps us to grow and make more content thank you for tuning in and until next time